So Keegan, if I was looking at a weld procedure, there's a lot of information on that, sometimes one page document, sometimes 10 page document. So let's sort of dissect the weld procedure a little bit, commonly called uh, the procedure, but referred to as the WPS, the Welding Procedure Specification. And I'm gonna start right off the top with base metal. Why is that important? So the reason the base metal on the weld procedure is so important is you can't just go grab random wire and start welding on a piece of pipe, which is your base metal. So knowing your base metal is gonna determine how the rest of the weld is gonna go, if it's gonna pass x-ray, and if it's getting heat stressed, if it's gonna crack or not. So making sure you know what your base metal is is extremely important to the weld procedure and making your final weld for a company. Okay, and you kind of led into that. If you're welding on you know, A106 grade carbon steel, you've got to have a filler metal that's compatible. So what do, you, what do you look on filler metal? How do you know it's the right thing? So the way you know you're using the right filler metal is A, going to your QC, making sure on the weld procedure it is the right wire. So I always double check with the procedure and the QC. And then also when I am welding on a piece of pipe or plate material, whatever, I check every individual piece of wire to make sure that it is, you know, supposed to go with that base metal because several times I've seen where welders are lazy, they don't check their base metal and they end up welding the whole weld with the wrong wire and it has to be a cutout. So that is not good at all. So checking your wire to make sure it is compatible with the base metal is a huge deal as well. Right. So on that 7018 or that 6010, they're, they're gonna put you know the numbers right on that welding rod. On your 308-15, the numbers right on that welding rod. On TIG filler, now you've got a three foot long stick and the numbers typically on both ends, but be cautious. You don't wanna weld the filler number off, do you? No, you don't. And usually I'll cut my wire in half. That way it has both sides of it on there. So I'll always weld with the side that doesn't have the number. And then when I finish, I'll have the numbers at the end. And also another thing is don't pick up random wire on the floor below your weld. Yes, you may think it is that base metal wire, but it could not be. And I've seen that time and time again, someone accidentally threw a piece of wire or dropped it and it rolled over to where you're welding. So never grab wire that you cannot see the base metal number. Yeah, it's always a good idea to get in that habit. Uh, if you're just beginning as, as a welder and TIG, always leave that number stamped on the end of that TIG. Some TIG fillers have a, a little tag if it's a specialty filler or if it's small, not stamped in. All right, so enough about base and filler. Let's move on. The process has to be important, right? Right. So knowing how you're going to weld it is such a huge deal because you will be on a job and they may have several different processes going on. So you'll be in a pipe shop, they may have spool guns, they may have TIG rigs, they may have stingers that you need to use to weld this with, you know? And if you finish a weld with the wrong process, then it's gonna be a cutout as well because the company or the procedure required that process to make that weld. So that's a huge deal as well. So in the process, there are a few variables that, that can you know, come into play. Obviously, if I'm stick welding, I don't need gas coming out, but if I'm, um, if I'm doing TIG weld or, or GMAW or FCAW, yeah, I've got to have some, some gas there. But what about the heat range? Normally, the procedure is going to tell us a, a range that we can set our machine in for that sweet spot. What if happens if I go above that range? If you go above that range, you're going to be damaging that base metal because it is rated for a certain temperature, a certain cool down time, just a whole lot of different variables that go into that base metal and how to weld it. So staying within that weld procedure temperature is very important as well. So, and also you have your base metal temperature too that you need to also be watching. And most companies will give you a temperature stick that you can check that with to make sure you're not going above or below. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm not familiar with, with a temp stick. Explain that to me. What's a temp stick? How does it work? So it's kind of like a chalk stick or like a crayon. And so this temp stick is rated for certain temperatures. So you'll have a 200 degree temp stick, you'll have a 400 degree temp stick, and depending on the weld, you will go up there to make the weld and they'll give you the temp stick. And sometimes you may have to preheat the weld and check it. But while you're welding on it, you know, this, this paint marker, crayon, or whatever temp stick will melt according to the temperature. Okay, so if, so if I need a, a, an inner pass temperature of, of 400 degrees max, if I've got that 400 amp 
or that 400 degree temp stick, that wax isn't gonna melt right. at 375 degrees, it has to be 400 degrees or above before the wax melts. Exactly, and also some jobs, they do have a temperature gun, which is really helpful. So like the chrome technicians, they'll have a temperature gun or the dials on the machine that tell you if you're above or below. Okay, all right, so that works. Yep. Uh, so these are just a few of the things when you're talking about dissecting a weld procedure, you gotta have the right base metal, the right filler, match with the right process, and the right temperature gas variables to make everything come out good for you. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our website as we have a virtual tour on how you can become a welder in today's world. Thanks and catch you next time.